Hi, I'm Rev Myron. I'm a minister through Pathways of Light, and I've been, of course, a miracle student for 40 years. I'm going through the lessons if you're asking Jesus for clarity. And then I write from that clarity, and that's what I'm sharing with you today. So let's get started. We're looking at lesson 274, and, and let's remember um, to read through our um, our special topic for this time, which is, What is the Christ? Okay, so let's look at Lesson 274. Today belongs to love. Let me not fear. Father, today I would let all things be as you created them, and give your Son the honor due his sinlessness, the love of brother to his brother and his friend. Through this I am redeemed. Through this, as well, the truth will enter where illusions were. Light will replace all darkness, and your Son will know He is as you created Him. A special blessing comes to us today from Him who is our Father. Give this day to Him, and there will be no fear today, because the day is given unto love. So three ideas jumped out at me as I read this. I will let all things be as you created them was the first idea. How do I do that? Well, I will not judge or project my grievances onto anyone or anything. The second idea is that in doing this, the son will be redeemed. I remember a meditation by Adishante that I enjoyed called redemptive love. He mentioned that one definition of redeem is to bring something to its original state. I have since then thought of love as being redemptive. As I withdraw my projections, the sun will be brought back to its original state. The third idea I noticed is that in doing this, I will no longer be in fear because the day is given to love. What a wonderful day this will be. What am I? Through these lessons, we are learning what is possible for us. Yesterday, for instance, we learned that it is possible to be in perfect peace. Today, we learned that it's possible to have no fear if we give the day to love. How do I give this day to love? Well, I let all things be as God created them. <clears throat> God created us as an extension of himself, perfect, innocent love. I'm reminded of the section, what am I? I am God's son, complete and healed and whole, shining in the reflection of his love. In me is his creation sanctified and guaranteed eternal life. In me is love perfected, fear impossible, and joy established without opposite. I am the holy home of God himself. I am the heaven where his love resides. I am his holy sinlessness itself, for in my purity abides his own. That beautiful beautiful statement, beautiful fact is uh, in that section. What am I? Hmm. For most of the day I will not leave my house, but I will be talking to several people today and before each call or Zoom meeting I will read this to remind me to let all things be as God created them. And with each person who comes to mind, if there's any temptation to imagine them as less than God created them, I will read this again to remind me of the truth about them. I anticipate a special day of love, meeting love in every encounter. Where could there be fear in such a day? I know my function. I know my function and I don't forget it. This is the effect of using this practice consistently. Here's an example. This morning I needed something out of my purse and couldn't find it. 
I wondered if I left it in the unlocked car, which led to fear it was stolen and fear that I forgot this. If I forgot this, I might forget something really important. Just as quickly, I remembered my commitment for the day, and I knew I'd given the day to love so there could be no fear. The anxiety lifted immediately, and as it happened, I looked down at my couch to see the strap of my purse peeking under the throw. Finding the purse without wasting too much time was great, but the speed at which I turned my thoughts around was the actual good news. My commitment to today's lesson has made me hyper vigilant about fear thoughts, and I'm aware <clears throat> I'm <clears throat> excuse me. I am aware that the ego thought system is pulling me toward fear and little things. I simply stand on the truth instead. Fear can also show up as doubt and uncertainty, but I know what to do about that too. I remind myself of the truth and I move on. <clears throat> this mind is my kingdom over which I have absolute rule, and I will not yield to the ego thought system. In doing this work, I am a help to others as I extend love and peace. So let's see what Regina has to say about what is a Christ today. Speaking of Christ consciousness, our special theme says, Your mind is part of his and his of yours. He is the part in which God's answer lies, where all decisions are already made and dreams are over. He remains untouched by anything the body's eyes perceive. That means that Christ consciousness is untouched by anything that occurs in the human experience. The best way to discover that you are Christ consciousness is to check in with consciousness, that is awareness, frequently. And notice, it is always the same. As the human that you seem to be goes through different experiences today, repeatedly check in with consciousness. Notice its sameness for you. Notice its untouched, untouchedness. Also, take the time to notice that this present, untouched nature is you. Notice that this present, consistent nature is actually more intimately you than anything else you may call you. So Regina talks about noticing that when we step back and check in with awareness, we will see that our nature is untouched by what goes on in the world. This is a discipline that Jesus has been teaching us from the beginning of the lessons. He asked us to go within and find God. That is our true nature. But most of all, try to sink, here's a, a quote. Most of all, try to sink down and inward, away from the world and all the foolish thoughts of the world. You are trying to reach past all these things. You are trying to leave appearances and approach reality. It is quite possible to reach God. In fact, it's very easy because it is the most natural thing in the world. Often I, re <clears throat> I remind myself, though probably not often enough, that I remain untouched by anything that happens in the world. In this story and to this body, I step back from the story and view it from afar. It looks much different than it does when I think I'm in the story and part of it. My present story can be very stressful if I become enmeshed in it, but with detachment it is interesting and helpful to my awakening. I can maintain detachment now, but sometimes I feel drawn back to the story. I practice detachment and I spend time identifying with the awareness that I am and less time identifying with the character Myron. So here are Regina's thoughts on the lesson. Today belongs to love, let me not fear. As you go through the day today and different experiences come and go, 
Some the mind may consider favorable and some the mind may consider unfavorable. Continue to check in with awareness. Notice, continue to notice your untouchedness. The end of fear lies in the direct realization that you are untouched by everything that happens in the world. <clears throat> in my thoughts, my practice has proven what the Course says and Regina points out. Remembering who I am is the end of fear. I'm sharing three past entries from 2016, 2015, and then 2011. So in 2016, I said, I had a little anxiety this morning when I woke up. I was triggered by a conversation I had yesterday in which I felt like I'd not been clear. I kept going over it in my mind, wondering if I should say something to bring more clarity to the topic. Or maybe I should let that go and just look at the primary cause of the anxiety. Normally, I don't have any problem seeing an idea that needs correction. But this time I had confused myself with so many conflicting thoughts. <clears throat> As I read this lesson, my mind began to clear. I will give this day to the Holy Spirit. He knows what to do with it. That will not glorify the separate self and will instead benefit the sonship. I felt the tension release. I don't know how this will unfold yet, but I am not worried about it anymore. It is certain that I will be shown what I need to know about my unease, and I will be directed on what to do. I don't have to worry about what to say or do, because he who sent me will direct me. I know that however it looks in my story, he will direct me to love more and fear less. All this vigilance and deciding for God is really paying off. In 2015, I said the Holy Spirit has been true to his word as he heals my mind and removes what I no longer want. I am well aware of the ego offering me all the old thoughts that used to plague me when I believed in them. I notice the ones that still grab my attention. One day I was told that one of my customers was talking to another vendor. And the ego jumped on that. With the ego mind, I thought about the loss of money and how I didn't want to tell my boss that I lost a customer. Obviously, loss and lack still have a certain attraction for me. Then I asked the Holy Spirit to help me see this differently. Other thoughts became my focus. I asked the Holy Spirit to choose for God for me. And this reminded me that I am fully surrendered. I know the ego mind likes a drama of it all and thinks that it must always be on the defensive. The ego mind thinks that defense is its only object, only option. But I'm not interested. It's amazing to me still that sometimes something that causes fear to clutch at me simply dissolves away when I turn from it and don't give it any attention. And it seems so real. Clearly, it is not. Will I lose that customer and all that customer means to me? I don't know. This is no longer any of my business. Am I safe either way? I must be. I belong to God. And I smile to myself as I think of Muji with his happy, smiling face saying, Take it up with the boss, okay? I don't deal with it anymore. It's not my business anymore. I've handed myself in. And this is me now. <laughs> I've handed myself in. Now I notice the ego working overtime, trying to find something that still hooks me, something that raises my emotions and grabs my attention. Each time this happens, I get to see what else is in my mind that I need to hand over. I used to think surrender meant giving up, sacrificing and losing something. Now I see to my happy surprise, that surrender to God means happiness and peace. It means that I release fear and accept love instead. Let today be a day of full surrender. Holy Spirit, you decide for me today. You tell me what everything means. You use this body of Myron to heal. I am surrendered to God. 
This day I choose love, not fear. Holy Spirit, I notice that I still hear the ego voice whisper of fear all day long. And this was in 2011 when things were not as clear to me. Sometimes it's just a sense of anxiety that something will go wrong. This lesson seems to reassure me that the way to quiet that voice is through remembering that I am still just as I was created. Can you speak to me about this? And Holy Spirit said, yes, this is a way of the ego mind. It warns you of all manner of disasters. Even when there's nothing to be concerned about within the illusory experience you're having, the ego wants you to know that the next problem is looming. <clears throat> In its world, this is exactly true. Within a thought system based on separation, there will always be contrast, and peace will always be relative and short-lived. But you are not in the ego's world. This simple truth is your salvation. You are not the body sitting in your chair listening to me, nor are you the one whose stomach clutches at the thought of teaching today without preparation and notes. You're not the one who walks into your house with appreciation in your heart only to hear the voice of fear, wonder if you can really afford it. I think about how much fun it would be to teach if I did not doubt myself and how nice it would be to just enjoy the moment without looking fearfully toward the next moment. And the Holy Spirit told me to sit here beside me and look at the story, Myron. This is not a story about you. It's a story that illustrates the beliefs held in the mind. Watch the story and notice the effects of the beliefs. Choose to let go of the beliefs whose effects are not illustrative of the truth of who you are. Show me the thoughts you no longer want and I will correct them. Together we will awaken the mind that dreams of Myron. As you practice stepping back from the story and seeing it for the useful tool that it is, you will take shake off the sleep that the mind has fallen into. You will gladly let go of the belief that you are the story and fully realize that you are the teller of the story, the script writer. It is this one mistaken thought, this belief that you are the one walking into the house and you're the one who's speaking today, the one who must somehow earn the money to support yourself. This is the only belief you really need to look at with me. Fear will fall away as you become willing to let this belief go. <clears throat> it is not necessary that you live in fear and dread. Guilt is not necessary. Judgment is an unnecessary burden. Your true identity remains intact and unaffected by your delusions. You can step into that identity as soon as you're ready to step out of the separation identity. You will do so when you're tired of playing this small part. I understand this in a way I never have before, but it keeps slipping away from me. And Holy Spirit said, continue to use the story to build your willingness. Use it as you always have done, noticing your thoughts and asking for correction. I will help you as I always have done. For we are part of each other. Trust me and trust yourself. You are waking up. Do not be distracted by the seeming appearances. Remember <clears throat> what you see in the world is just a sleeping mind's artifacts. Trust that all will be arranged for that purpose as you focus on your healing. Trust that you are safe. Thank you so much for joining me in today's lesson. And if you found it helpful, then please like it, and if you haven't yet, please subscribe, and I will be back tomorrow with another lesson.